Hey folks, the topic of the day is photo editing software and let's jump right into it. Okay, if we're going to talk photo editing software, we have to start with Adobe Lightroom. It is just the cream of the crop. It's the best software out there in my opinion. And it's just all around excellent and has every option that I could think that I need. Now, the downside to Adobe is that their products tend to be a little expensive and they tend to be fairly elaborate for the beginner, but the learning curve isn't, isn't that big. It, you learn it fairly quickly and it's, and it's hard to get in trouble because you can just reset as you go. Now, I'm not going to get into a tutorial or anything. There's a million tutorials out there on these and, uh, it's, in, it's actually in the process of changing right now into a different couple different formats. So you may want to keep an eye on that if you're looking to, to purchase it. Uh, or you could do the monthly $10 a month uh, subscription fee, which again, starts to add up pretty quickly. So Adobe may be the king of photo editing software. It is certainly not the only game in town. Let's talk about Windows 10. Windows 10 Photo editing software has come a long way, and I use it all the time. Now, you can only use it for JPEG, but it is extremely fast. It's extremely easy, user-friendly. I've done a full tutorial on it, which is almost self-explanatory, so it's unnecessary. But it is a very effective, it's great for a quick tweak. And if you don't want to sit there and dive into the all the changes of a raw file on a adobe or uh the canon software this is just a really fast and effective way to adjust your photos or enhance them it's got a one button enhance feature that is it works great so you can't go wrong using this if you're uh, if you run windows 10 and uh i use it all the time and it it just yields super easy results and it really enhances the photos so if if i'm going to go with the number two i'm going adobe lightroom first and windows 10 software second before i go to canons so take this picture for example watch how fast and easy this is there hit one thing boom darkens it a little bit move this slider here and there just make quick adjustments it's so fast. I love this clarity right here. It, there's just so many options here that are so fast and so easy. So check that out for sure. It's a huge time saver. Okay, so let's go into Canon's software that comes with EOS cameras. Now, when, it come, when I say comes with it, you have to get on their website and enter your serial number and then download it onto the computer. And then once you get it, you're going to look, open it up and you're going to be very confused because there's a lot going on here. But once you dive into it and kind of learn it and get used to it, which happen, you get used to it fairly quickly, you'll see that it's very effective. Um, you can do a lot of things with the raw files. Uh, similar to Adobe, now it is missing a dehaze and a clarity option, which is kind of, kind of stinks because those are probably the two two features or sliders in Adobe that most people use the most often, I'd say. I don't know. I'm just speculating, but in my opinion, those that's like the key to Adobe right there, those two. And the fact that you can use... So on Adobe, you can select certain spots of the photo, highlight them, and adjust the exposure, the contrast, and so forth, where on... Canon software, basically it's the whole image that gets adjusted. You can't really spot select and make adjustments. And again, you're, you're doing it in raw on raw files here versus in Windows, you can only do JPEG. So you have a lot more information you can change and adjust in, in the Canon software. Like I said, it is more complex than either Lightroom or Windows. However, once you learn it, it's very effective. So that'd be my number three. And then this last one here is just a uh, Movavi photo editor. I bought it for like 15, 20 bucks. I got a deal on it because I use their video editing software all the time. I love their video editing software, but this is garbage. Um, 
They say you can do raw files. I tried raw files. I couldn't get them to work. They wouldn't save. Uh, is, as you can see here, it overdoes everything, or it's just it's a, it's not good. <laughs> I don't. I hate to talk bad about them. And the only reason I threw it in here, because this is like one of those mid-level ones that you can buy. There's a million of these types online. And it, I don't know. I've just found that most of these mid-level ones are kind of garbage. So I don't know. For what it's worth, I put this on there and I'd say avoid this one. Okay. Now this is kind of pointless to show these because there's a million different things you could do with it. But it can kind of give you an idea from what you saw as the starting point to just the millions of options you have in basically any of these. Okay, so there's just a few options that are out there. There's there's tons of options out there, but keep this in mind. It's, it's hard to take an average photo and make it look great no matter what you do, no matter what software you use. But it's not hard to take a good photo and make it look great, okay? And almost every photo you see out there, professional or hanging up on the wall or wherever you're wherever you're at if you're seeing a photo taken by somebody else it's probably been through some post processing i'd say 99.9% .9 of them have it's probably it probably almost never happens that somebody takes a photo and then it's ready to go it's all, all almost everything has been through some form of post processing so if you're a beginner of photography and you're wondering why your pictures aren't looking like everybody else's, a lot of it probably has to do with the fact that you're not using the proper post-processing or no post-processing. So check these out. Um, they all have something different to offer, as I've showed and kind of explained a little bit there. But yeah, check them out. It's, this is part of the fun of photography is the post-processing. It's, it's a two-part process. Actually, it's a multi-part process. But a huge part of photography is absolutely post-processing, something I have been learning and learning, and it's also a lot of fun. So check it out, and if you have any questions, uh, hey, talk to me. Uh, I'm always trying to answer questions, and if you ask me a question, odds are somebody who knows a lot more than me will be on here watching and will answer the question also. So... Hey, thanks for watching. I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you like this video, if you want to see more about this stuff, subscribe to my channel. Uh, look through my comments. People are always talking, asking questions. If you can help them, that's great. And, you know, this is the photo community, and I'm trying to get involved. And I'm fairly new at this, too. Um, I've been editing videos and stuff for a long time. But photography, this is kind of a new new ball game for me. And it's huge. There's it's so much to learn. It's, you just never stop learning. I'm like a sponge absorbing constant knowledge about this. I'm watching everybody else's videos, trying to learn about photography, trying to help my viewers out. And uh, this is just a lot of fun. So, again, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you soon with another video. All right. Again, subscribe if you haven't. Thank you.